Welcome back to Spoiled Vision Movie Recaps. Today, I'm delving into the 2020 adventure, sci-fi, thriller film titled Voyagers. Spoiler alert! Beware and stay cautious. Earth is in its dying throes, prompting scientists to seek a new habitable planet. Their quest bears fruit in the year 2063. On screen, we catch a glimpse of the newly discovered planet, described by a woman as humanity's potential new home. She goes on to explain the necessity of a scouting mission to this planet. Given that the voyage will span 86 years, the mission's crew will undergo generations aboard the spacecraft, with the third generation being the ones to reach their destination. To ensure the crew's suitability, they're genetically engineered on Earth by merging the genes of leading scientists. A man expounds on the rationale behind this strategy justifying the need for a crew comprised of children specifically raised and trained for this mission's singular purpose. The next step involves determining when they will be ready for departure. The younger the crew, the longer their limited resources can be preserved. However, the man Richard harbors concerns about their ability to handle the complexities of space travel independently. Subsequently, Richard is seen donning protective gear as he enters the facility where the young crew is being raised. He visits their living quarters, and upon spotting him, the children burst into joyful expressions. Richard assesses their progress in education and tucks in Christopher, Sala, and Zack. When Zack confesses his fear, Richard assures him of his safety. The following day, Richard confers with a woman in charge of the mission, proposing his inclusion with the children to nurture and safeguard them. His involvement would accelerate the mission's launch from seven years to four. The mission sets off with Richard at the helm. The shuttle docks with Humanitas, the spacecraft for their journey. Once aboard, they locate their quarters. Richard steals one last glance at Earth. A decade later, the children have matured into adults, preparing for their daily routines on the ship. Their initial lesson pertains to second-generation fertilization, scheduled for the 24th year of their lives. The crew moves robotically through their daily routines, sipping a blue liquid, Christopher and Zack immerse themselves in classical music, while Scylla gazes out into the boundless expanse of space. Later, she confides in Richard, questioning the value of the crew's lives. In an attempt to console her, he shares photographs of his grandparents and emphasizes the importance of securing the future. That night, Christopher grapples with insomnia, attuned to the ship's ambient sounds. The following day, Richard and Christopher inspect the hydroponics bay to assess plant conditions. A message on Christopher's screen alerts him to water toxicity concerns. Seeking an explanation, he queries Richard, suspecting issues in processing chemicals from their urine. Richard, however, dismisses his apprehensions, retaining skepticism. Consequently, Christopher turns to Zack for insights into the enigmatic T56J ingredient. They ponder why the information is concealed. Later, under the cover of darkness, the duo ventures to unveil the truth. Christopher successfully circumvents the firewall, discovering that T56J is a component of the blue liquid they consume. While Zack initially assumes it's a digestive aid, they discern its other, more unsettling effects. It dulls their emotions, dampens their desires, and suppresses pleasure responses. They realize they're being drugged to keep them docile, preventing natural reproduction and ship overpopulation. Both abstain from consuming the blue liquid, Subsequently, they share their findings with Kai and Julie, also divulging details about a concealed compartment aboard the ship. Later, during a session with Richard, Christopher confronts him about the deception, specifically mentioning the unmarked compartment, Pod 23. Richard asserts that the mission concealed information for a reason, suggesting it might pertain to the third generation. Following the session, Richard dispatches a message to Earth, seeking permission to be forthright with the crew to maintain their trust, although the message will take time to reach its destination. The subsequent day, while standing in line beside Sulla, Christopher indulges in a fantasy involving her. Over lunch, he discreetly observes her, but Zack remarks on her transformed demeanor. When Richard intervenes to enforce the rules, Christopher refrains from pursuing Sulla further. In the gym, tensions escalate as Christopher and Zack engage in a physical altercation, pushing the boundaries. Baffled crew members witness the episode. The effects of abstaining from the drug become increasingly apparent. Responding to mysterious ship noises, the trio heads to an observation room, 
speculating about the source, which they suspect may be an alien life form. Meanwhile, Sela and Richard explore his office, where he shares preserved earth plants. Hearing their conversation, Zack and Christopher approach the room. Zack's jealousy flares when he observes Richard touching Sela's shoulder. They lose contact with Earth, and Richard informs them of the need to repair the transmitter. Zack volunteers for the task, while the others continue their designated roles. Preparations are underway, and as Zack approaches Sela again, she imparts information about the suit he'll be wearing, leading to an inappropriate interaction. When Richard rushes in and separates Zack from Sela, he inquires about the situation, but Zack flees. In his search for Zack, Richard encounters Phobe, who informs him that Zack has ceased taking the blue liquid. Subsequently, he crosses paths with Christopher, who also reveals his decision to discontinue the drug. Despite their disagreement, Richard explains that the drug was implemented to prevent the type of behavior displayed by Zack. He implores Christopher to assist in repairing the transmitter, pledging his support when Christopher voices his objections to mission control once the transmitter is back online. While the rest of the crew remains in their positions on the ship, preparations for the spacewalk continue. Zack enters the system's room, while Richard and Christopher venture outside the ship. Christopher experiences unfamiliar sensations, prompting Richard to keep a watchful eye. As Richard repairs one transmitter part and moves on to the second, noises from inside the ship indicate growing restlessness among the crew. They investigate the exterior when an unidentified entity appears on the screen beside Richard and Christopher, inflicting harm on Richard and hurling him away from the ship. Simultaneously, the ship encounters a malfunction, leaving everyone bewildered. Amidst the chaos, a fire erupts in the system's room. Christopher retrieves Richard and brings him to the medical area. The ship experiences a myriad of errors, affecting navigation and communication. The medical team, led by Scylla, attempts to resuscitate Richard, but their efforts prove futile. Scylla, serving as the chief medical officer, pronounces him deceased. In a subsequent crew meeting, they discuss the incident, referencing the ominous creaking sound. One crew member mentioned seeing something on the monitor that appeared as if an alien force had infiltrated Richard. Phoebe becomes emotional, and Christopher reassures the crew that as long as they stay united, they will persevere. The crew initiates system reboots and attempts to access surveillance archives to ascertain what happened to Richard, only to discover that all the footage has been erased due to the fire in the system's room. A decision is made to choose a new chief officer with Zack initially vying for the position. However, the crew insists on an election. After a vote, Christopher is elected as the new chief officer, with Zack begrudgingly congratulating him. Their first priority is repairing the transmitter damage. Christopher assigns the entire crew to work on the ship's other fire-induced repairs, with the surveillance system remaining as the final task so they can investigate Richard's fate. Sela, while in Richard's office, sips through his personal photos and videos when Christopher approaches her. She confides that she's been tasked with destroying his personal archive, though she's reluctant to do so. She shares Richard's photographs with Christopher, leading to a conversation about the significance of family. During their conversation, Christopher inquires why Richard confided in Sela, hinting at a possible deeper connection between them. Sela clarifies that Richard was just feeling isolated. They explore Richard's video diary, revealing his unwavering belief in the mission and his genuine care for the crew. Christopher then searches for the crew and discovers them in the cantina, frustrated with their absence from their designated posts. Zack explains that they're repairing the refrigerators to prevent food spoilage, but an excess of perishables prompts him to propose a feast in celebration of their new chief officer Christopher. They indulge in the meal, during which Kai advises everyone to abstain from consuming the blue liquid, and they collectively dispose of it. Scylla and Christopher enjoy themselves as they watch Richard's videos, but Christopher finds himself increasingly drawn to her. Meanwhile, Zack and Julie share an attraction, engaging in physical contact that draws attention from the others. The crew playfully engages in bouts of play fighting and races around the ship, experiencing a light-hearted moment as they explore Richard's personal archive. Sela discovers the crew in Richard's quarters and attempts to make them leave, but their reluctance irks her. Zack is the last to depart, implying that Richard is no longer there to protect her. 
In response, she retrieves a scalpel from the med bay. Worried about Zack's intentions, Christopher follows him, but arrives at the med bay before Zack does. When Zack arrives, Christopher pretends that they are engaged in a romantic encounter, prompting Zack to leave. Sella, still uncertain of Christopher's motives, threatens him with the scalpel. Christopher clarifies that he's there to assist her, and she suggests that he should help the rest of the crew, who are spiraling out of control. Christopher departs and encounters Zack along the way, advising him to keep his distance from Sella. Meanwhile, they hear the enigmatic crackling noise once again. As others also take notice, Christopher tracks the sound throughout the ship. In a fit of jealousy, Kai witnesses Julie becoming close to another crew member and loses his temper, assaulting him. They engage in a physical altercation. Later, in the cantina, Christopher attempts to restore order among the crew, but they resist his efforts. Suddenly, the crewman whom Kai attacked retaliates by striking Kai with a tool. Christopher intervenes by striking the crewman as well. He instructs the crew to ensure Kai and the other crewmen receive medical treatment before convening in the common room. In the meeting, Christopher emphasizes the need to cease fighting and continue with the necessary repairs. Zack challenges his leadership, and some crew members express concerns about not completing the mission themselves. Christopher reminds them that their grandchildren will see it through and underscores the importance of supporting future generations. Amid the rising tension within the crew, one member expresses fear about working in the systems room, believing that an alien presence dwells there, possibly introduced by Christopher when Richard died. Phoebe proposes repairing the surveillance system to uncover the truth, but Zack dismisses her and calls for Christopher's silence. Christopher, increasingly disillusioned with adhering to the rules, attempts to garner support from the others, arguing that he's not the right leader. Zack contends that he should lead and tries to form a faction, purportedly strong enough to confront the alien, if it indeed exists. Many crew members join Zack's group, but some remain loyal to Christopher. The group siding with Christopher embarks on a mission to repair the surveillance system while fearing the presence of the alien. Christopher enters the room first to investigate, while Zack and his followers navigate the hallways, eventually reaching the system's room. Unbeknownst to them, Christopher is also inside. Zack and Kai venture further into the room to search for the alien, while those outside witness something alarming happening within. In their terror, Zack and Kai hastily exit the room, sealing it behind them. They later inform the others that they were attacked by the alien. Meanwhile, Christopher brings the surveillance drive to Sulla in the med bay. Along with a few others, they scrutinize the footage, which reveals that Zack and Kai were responsible for Richard's electrocution, fabricating the alien story. The group decides to keep this information under wraps until they decide on their next steps. Christopher and Sulla conceal the drive in her room and discuss their concerns about Zack. Christopher worries that the others might not care about the truth, and Sulla urges him to stay with her. They share an intimate moment, culminating in their physical intimacy. The following morning, Zack knocks on Sulla's door, threatening to enter one way or another. When they open the door, Zack and Kai invite them to another celebration in the cantina. Christopher's group joins the gathering, with the others already eating. Zack encourages them to get some food, and when they sit down, he stands up and proclaims himself the new chief officer. Suddenly, Christopher takes action, going to a monitor and playing the footage from the incident. He exposes Zack's role in Richard's death and the absence of an alien, accusing Zack of lying to them. He suggests that Zack isolate himself in his room while they review the evidence and determine their course of action. The revelation stirs up emotions and Zack confesses, claiming he acted to protect them, believing the alien resided in Richard and was introduced by Christopher, lurking within one of them. Under Zack's influence, the crew agrees to find and eliminate the perceived alien entity. Zack manipulates them into turning on each other, inciting a violent brawl. They suspect a crewman working in the med bay is the alien and give chase, with Christopher following suit. The crew brutally attacks the crewman, leading to his death. Christopher leads his group to a secure location in the ship, while Zack's group takes refuge in the med bay and arms themselves. In their hideout, Christopher's group deliberates on their next steps, with some feeling defeated and contemplating joining Zack's group, who possesses weapons, 
Sella, reveals that Christopher knows about hidden weapons on the ship in a secret compartment. Christopher ventures alone to retrieve the weapons. He locates the compartment, but struggles to open it, inadvertently triggering an alarm that Julie and another crewman hear. They, too, sense Christopher inside the compartment and inform Zack. When Christopher returns with tools to open the compartment, Zack's group has already begun disassembling it, revealing the cache of weapons. Kai speculates that the weapons are intended for the third generation, but Zack insists they are meant for their own use. Two members from Christopher's group express a desire to join Zack's faction, and Zack inquires about the whereabouts of the rest of the group. Sela, Phobe, and Christopher collaborate on a plan to get close to Zack, with Christopher suggesting he should kill him, an idea Fubi resists. Sela monitors their movements and notices they are closing in. They cut the power and reach the room, where Sela requests a private conversation with Zack. She pretends to want to join his group and be with him, but Zack rebuffs her, laughing. Phoebe intervenes, questioning their collective descent into madness, but they silence her. In a shocking turn of events, Kai kills Phoebe, leaving everyone, including Zack, stunned. He then shifts his focus to capturing Christopher. Christopher and Sulla manage to escape, but the others relentlessly hunt them throughout the ship. They seek refuge in a vent, but the others quickly identify their location. Zack shoots into the vent, while Julie cautions him against damaging their food supply. Zack sends one of his men to verify if they have been apprehended, but Christopher and Sulla elude capture once again. However, someone shoots at them, prompting them to search for weapons. Christopher finds a fire extinguisher, and when Kai enters the med bay, they incapacitate him, inadvertently causing his death. Zack quickly locates Christopher and Sulla, firing at them as they flee. They manage to enter an airlock, where Christopher instructs Sulla to don a spacesuit. He covers the airlock's window. When Zack reaches the airlock, he shoots without hesitation. To his shock, he is sucked out into the vacuum of space because the hatch to the outside has been opened. Zack grabs Sulla and engages in a struggle to close the hatch, ultimately stabbing her with a knife. Christopher pushes Zack outside, but in the course of their fight, he is also pulled into space. Before Zack can seal the hatch, Sella kicks him out of it. She searches for Christopher and waits for him to return. Suddenly, she spots him clinging to the ship. They manage to come back inside and inform the remaining crew that Zack is gone. They put down their weapons. Sometime later, the entire crew gathers for lunch in the cantina. Sella inquires of Christopher how they can prevent a similar tragedy from occurring in the future. They revisit some of Richard's recordings, in which he emphasizes that no matter the hardships faced during the mission, those who endure are evidence of humanity's worthiness to be saved. The crew holds another vote for a new chief officer, and Sulla is selected. She records a diary entry in which she states that henceforth, all decisions will be made through voting, and they will continue to abstain from consuming the blue liquid. The crew collaborates on repairing the ship, and works together harmoniously as time passes. Sella is seen pregnant, with the baby being Christopher's. The baby is born, and a few years later, the child is observed running through the ship and interacting with other children. These youngsters grow up on the ship as the first generation of crew members grows older. After 86 years since the mission's inception, the Humanitas can be seen floating in space, activating its drive to land on the alien planet. Both the older and younger generations eagerly anticipate their new home on the unfamiliar planet. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notification for more movie recaps.